Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Airfix's brand new photo reconnaissance mosquito. So unfortunately this build started off on a little bit of a negative with having some excess oil on my sprue. However, this was sorted out just by using some higher grit sandpaper and being very careful. After I sorted that out, it was time to move on with the build. So as you can see on screen here, I'm constructing what would usually be the bomb bay of a mosquito. However, because it's a photo reconnaissance unit, this is more the photo bay, we will call it. So after that was done, it was time to move on with a couple more components. Here you can see me putting the in the back wall, sorry, for the cockpit. And also here, the radio slash receiver. Uh, and a couple of other details. I must say Airfix have done a really good job here moulding these details as they look brilliantly in scale and also they just have very nice locating pins to make sure that they all go in the right places whether that be making sure that one lug is bigger than the other so it goes in the right rotation or making very unique holes for unique parts. It, just, it was a real joy to make this cockpit so two thumbs up for me for this. Going back to a couple more specifics, here you can see me putting in a couple of the cushions for the seats and seats in general. I personally think that seats are a little bit of a make or break for a kit, but in this case I think they're moulded very nicely indeed and look very realistic. So on to building another chair, this time it's the main pilot's chair. For this build I opted not to have the pilot, so I did have to make sure that everything was constructed well and also painted well. So to make sure that this was constructed well i had to firstly sort out this gargantuous knob that was on the side of my armchair so this has to be sorted out otherwise your chair just won't go together correctly this can be done by either sanding it or in my case i use my scalpel blade just to trim off and just slice off this uh this big knob um the, quickly the technical term for one of those is an ejector pin i believe um yeah not not brilliant placement there from Airfix, but you know, it's it's a problem that can be sorted out. So as I was going on a rant about knobs and ejector pins and whatnot, I was painting the entirety of the cockpit and the Bombay in interior green. The side walls were also done with this, and as you can see what I'm doing now is I'm just getting a couple of the details and I'm picking them out with black, white, and then I'm gonna go over them and dry brush them. Dry brushing is a brilliant technique in this scale. It brings out all the fine, fine details without having to actually pick them out with the brush. So I highly recommend it. So when dry brushing, my top tip of the day is just to make sure that you don't have too much paint on your brush. Arguably, I had a little bit too much paint on my brush here and it kind of overdoes it. So just take it slow and steady. You can always add to your dry brushing technique, but it's very, very hard to reverse this technique. Other techniques that can be used to bring out details is what you can see me using here. So this is a pin wash, an oil pin wash. And what you do is you just kind of dab it on details and this oil wash will run into all of the recesses. It just adds an element of depth and really helps to highlight these features. I use this on all of the little um, wires and lines running through the cockpit and also on some of the side walls and under the seats just to give Give, give a third dimension and a, an element of grime and use to the cockpit. Another area that this technique felt fitting was in the gear bays. So these are on the insides of the engine nacelles. These are also painted in the cockpit green color at the same time as, you, as when I was painting the cockpit. I do this just to save myself a bit of time and also a little bit of airbrush cleaning because I am a lazy modeler. And speaking of me being a lazy modeler, here you can see me using, um, in essence, is pretty much just a, a hairdryer. But all I do is I use this hot blowy thing, as you can see I've labelled, uh, just to speed up the drying processes on my oils. It just reduces the drying time from about maybe two or three hours to just 20 or 30 minutes. So now I'm going to go on to paint a couple of the leather aspects of the cockpit. I use Revel Aqua Leather Brown, that's a bit of a mouthful, and then I will pretty much do a base colour of that, and then I will come in over the top using a couple of other shades, more like buff and lighter colours, darker colours, just to create a sort of worn leather effect. I don't think it's a brilliant job done here, but it will do, it will, it will do, you know? 
So it's very important to look at the instructions very carefully here as there's quite a few sort of interior walls which need to be put in. Here you could see me putting in the uh, tail wheel mount. So very important, keep an eye out for it. So here you've just seen me assemble the control panel and also the rudder pedals. Uh, went together really well, really nice little system with a little tab. And then you can see me just dry brushing again to bring out the details. If I don't have to use a decal for the control panel, I won't. And in this case, I didn't feel the need to. Some eagle eyed amongst you might realize that there is no control stick. And this is because I fell foul of Airfix quality control again. First on the Anson, now on the Mosquito, my control column was all warped and unusable, which was a real shame. I didn't think this would be able to slip past, but you know, not really much complaining as it isn't that obvious, but room for improvement Airfix. So he can see me using quite a big drill bit to cut out a couple of holes in the fuselage. This is because it's a photo reconnaissance unit, there's quite a few elements of glass where cameras can look through so just make sure you have the right drill bits and this will work absolutely fine so it was a first for me using a jig as per se in a kit so airfix provide this jig for you to drill through some holes through this worked really really well indeed and it's just a really helpful system so then it's time to join the fuselage halves and also the inner cockpit walls together this went together really well indeed. Some really, really nice tight fits here. So well done Airfix. Another nice thing to note here is how tight the fit is on top. You can almost see that there is near to no work that needs to be done on the seams. However, that doesn't mean that there's no work at all. So to get rid of any potential seams that were there, I put on a thin bead of super glue over the seam and then wait for it to dry and sand it down working from 300 grit up to 800 grit and then polishing with a 3200 grit sanding spongy thing. Uh, getting a pack or a really big varied pack of sanding sponges from Amazon is a must for modelling so I could probably leave a link down below if you wanted it. On to a couple more sub assemblies now. Here I am putting in the window for the main hatch. Um, you might have seen in some of the previous clips where I was using these windows that they all have a notch on them to make sure that you get the right orientation. This is so handy when it comes to modelling, so well done Airfix. On to doing a couple of the horizontal stabilisers. These slide together very nicely indeed and then they click into the fuselage using almost an interlocking jigsaw-esque system which I really liked using had no issues here and it gave me a really tight fit I then used Tamiya's extra thin cement and just ran it along the seams to ensure extra stability do have a make sure that you get the right orientation of both the horizontal stabilizers as if you fall foul it might look a little bit weird on the dihedral so going on to the rudder we have kind of a butt joint which I'm, I'm not too thrilled about as I don't think there's a very strong secure point for you to glue but um, it works in the end just make sure that your glue is completely dried before you start handling it. So on to the last few little sub assemblies that need to be connected onto the main fuselage. Um, these are just the Bombay slash photo bay doors and the windows and these all slide into place very nicely. I was a little bit worried that they might not go together as well as some of the other aspects of the kit but I was pleasantly surprised. So moving on to doing some of the exhaust pipes, uh, they have quite a cool interlocking sort of teeth mechanism which then slide into a little housing I guess we can say. The back of the housing has these nice um, arrows on them which you will see which just make sure that you get the right orientation. You can kind of see them in this clip here. I think this is um, a brilliant feature and I think more manufacturers should try to do it just because it really does help to make sure and ensure that you get the right orientation of parts when you are putting them together. Um, and so many times when you're using very similar parts, you can get the orientations all mixed up and put pieces in the wrong places, which then leads to further fit issues and just gives you a bit of a headache. So as you've seen in a couple of the previous clips, I've been fitting a couple of these sort of sidewalls and internal structural pieces for the gear bays. These go together quite nicely. However, I would prefer some slightly more pronounced um, tabs just to make sure that you, you really think you're getting a nice secure fit. So a sub assembly then slips into one side of the nacelle 
and then that just it can be glued in place if you don't want the propeller to spin I personally don't I don't like my models being able to move that much so I glued it in place and then I fit the other side of the null cell into the place really nice fit here no real issues and then a couple of other aspects like the little chin intake and slips into place they've done quite a good job here at um, making sure that the seam is the same sort of thickness as other panel lines so it looks seamless pun intended <laughs> after that horrific joke we will swiftly move on um another intake uh, as as everyone knows on the channel my technical references are diabolical uh, but another intake then slaps into place on the underside once again a very nice fit um on the whole this airfix kit if i can sum it up in one word is solid you know everything just snaps into place and there's no no proper headaches that this kit um throws at you so if you're a beginner i do recommend this kit um well maybe not a beginner maybe a novice maybe this could be a good second or third kit so then some more sub assemblies and more windows to be popped into place this time there is a underside wing light for both sides of the wing and then the upper and lower surfaces of the wing can be glued together do not worry about the huge gap at the front that is actually meant to be there that is for the radiator intake thingy it is meant to be there though so do not worry anyway onwards we go on to connecting my nacelle sub assembly onto the underside of the wing this goes together very nicely as you can see there is a there is no gap actually uh, between the um, upper lower wing sorry and upper bit of the nacelle which is an impressive feat there's also these lovely mask pieces for um, the kit which can go over any of the open detail which you don't want to get paint into I think more manufacturers should make this almost a necessity in kits as it it just helps doesn't it it just makes life so much easier for when you're spraying so talking about the actual fit of the wings to the fuselage, it is very nice. Um, no gaps to fill, or at least well, may maybe a small one, but I didn't think it was noticeable enough to actually require any filler. So I then went on to use the CT canopy mask for the mosquito. This went together, well no, not went together, went on very nicely indeed, um, and did, didn't have any bleeds or anything, as you'll see later, so I highly recommend. Um, yeah, no real issue with the masks or any of the fit of the glass in the kit, so very good. I then went on to once again another sub-assembly this time. It would be the sub-assembly of what I believe is an under-wing fuel tank. I might be wrong, but that is what I think it is. Anyway, these kind of just fell into place very nicely. However, if you are putting them on, which I think you do have to, Make sure you remember to drill out the holes on the underside of the wing beforehand. Yeah. Anyway, with that, that was the mosquito assembly complete. There it is, me showing it off um, with my Michael Jackson glove on. And then it was time to use some primer. And in my case, I use, here it comes. There we go, Ammo's One Shot Primer. I've always used this and I like it a lot. So that had a nice coat all over the model. And then we went in with some modeling technique. And if you are a returning viewer of the channel, you know how much I love a good bit of modeling. Uh, modeling, what it does is pretty much just create some underlying tonal variations for the paint that will go on top. Um, very simple technique to do. Just kind of do lots of random movements and in each of the panels and try not to get too much white paint on the panel lines. It just accentuates the panel lines. I personally like the look of that. Some people don't. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much what modeling does. There's seven, several sorry, different ways of creating tonal variation on an aircraft. However, this is quite a, um, a popular way of doing so. And I know why, because I quite look, like the look of it. So when it comes to blue color that I was using, I used AK's third gen PRU blue RAF photo, I'm saying it again, but anyway, photo reconnaissance blue from AK. Um, I had a little bit of a mixed opinion on this. I found it quite hard to spray, which I don't know if I'm doing anything wrong, but if anyone could point me in the direction of maybe a good video showing you how to use it, um, that would be much appreciated because I managed to get it down. Maybe not the best, but I managed to get it down. 
However, I feel like I wasn't really using it right because it was a little bit spurty, a bit spurty. So, um, yeah, if someone could point me in the direction of a tutorial on how to use this, I'd be very happy um, and very appreciative. The actual colour, though, the blue colour, I was more than happy with. I thought it was a bang on representation. So we can now just take a little moment to talk about what does mottling actually do. If you see on the inner of some of the panels, the blue is a little bit lighter and a little bit brighter than the blue on the outside of the panel, like around where the panel lines are. It just creates this sort of visual interest and it, it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. So that's why I do it. After the blue was all down, it was time to do a little bit of masking as I opted for scheme B, which featured a red tail and also some invasion of stripes, um, it meant I definitely had my work cut out for me. So I use a mixture of Tamiya's flexible tape, which is the white stuff, and also Tamiya's normal tape, which is the yellowy, orangey looking stuff. Here you can see, all masked off. Um, when it comes to doing invasion stripes, my tip for you is to pretty much mask off one colour, spray it, I usually like to start with the white, um, and then mask off once that's all dried, mask off the white and then just do the black. It's the, the simplest way of doing it rather than masking like one stripe at a time. Um, and it also makes them usually a little bit more equal. So here you can see me just very lightly dusting on a bit of the white. So I only dust it on because I don't want to have a huge paint build up along the edges of the masking tape, which can, it, it just leads to a bit of a ridge and it makes it very, very hard indeed to um, put your decals on top of it. Um, so I'd recommend just dusting it on and also taking your masking tape off as soon as you physically can. So after that was done, I masked off the white and then I went in with the black for the other, well, for the black aspect of the invasion stripes. Once again, doing the exact same technique, just dusting it on so I don't get a build up of paint and a little bit of a ridge. So yeah, if you want any more sort of idea on how I do invasion stripes, I do have my Airfix 1 to 24 scale Spitfire video up where I think I go into a little bit more depth on how I do them. Anyway, very satisfying bit of Mar demasking but appealing for you so enjoy so there was the final product i was very pleased with how these invasion stripes turned out also it's a good time to mention that when we're using curved surfaces like the underside of a fuselage i personally think it's always a better idea to use the flexible tape rather than the rigid tape so it's just because it doesn't kind of fold over on itself as much so it was then time to move on to doing the lovely iconic red tail of this American, well not American, but we'll say a magic, a, a, a magican, American registered aircraft. Uh, when doing red, it's always a very good idea to have yourself um, a flat base. When I say flat base, I mean a flat singular color. So for my case, I went for white as it just makes the red pop a little bit more than if it was on black or gray. Um, and then very, very lightly go over in layers when it comes to red because if you build up too much, it's very obvious to see where you built it up in a certain area. After I had my red tail done, I gave the entire aircraft a lovely coat of Mr. Hobby's gloss varnish. After that was all dry, I then went on to using some micro set and micro salt to put on the decals. The decals in this kit are airfix quality. They are brilliant, they go on, they're strong, they're thin. Just, if you know airfix, you know that you're gonna get some good decals with your kit. So, talking a little bit more about how I apply the decals, I first put them in water as usual, then I grab my pincers, grab them out of the water, and then I will already have a layer of micro set um, on my applied or the area where I'm going to apply the decal and then I will lay the decal on with my pincers in almost like a, a rolling fashion. I'll then usually use my finger or maybe a cotton bud to adjust where I'm going to put it. Then I'll leave it there for maybe 5-10 minutes once it's in the right position. Then I'll come in with a cotton bud and just smooth it over, make sure there's no bubbles and then I'll come in with the micro sole to just soften decal into all the underlying details. So here was all of the decals slapped on. They all went on very nicely indeed. I was very happy to have no silvering. Once they were all on, I used um, a semi-gloss. I know it says flat here, but I actually used a semi-gloss uh, before I did some weathering. 
So first what I'm doing here is I'm putting some white spirit on the area where I'm going to be weathering. I went for weathering around a couple of the panel lines where I reckon there would have been a bit of oil usage. Quickly this wasn't done off of a reference image so if it's completely wrong I do apologise but I just wanted to go with a little bit of an artistic approach to this model. So then I will dab on some oil over where I've just put the white spirit. Then I'll get my blending brush out as you will see in a second and just kind of dab it in, just blend it in. It will look quite harsh in the clip which I'm about to show you however afterwards I do spend about 5-10 minutes using a bit of white spirit to either wash away or blend it in or smooth out the effect. So um, here you go, here you can see me blending it in and uh, I know it looks quite harsh here, however, you will see it does look much better once it's all sorted. I do also use a pin wash. Um, I use a pre-mixed one by, it's either Tamiya or AK or Ammo, one of the two. But pretty much that's then put onto all of the panel lines and then wiped away with a clean cloth in the direction of airflow. So after a little bit of painting and a little bit of weathering, it was time to get back to some sub-assemblies. Here you can see me putting together the gear legs. Uh, all the gear, gear struts, gear legs, uh, you know, you, you get what I mean. These went together very nicely and there's an interesting system here where you have to use the inner um, sort of, well, the inner of the nacelle, it was almost a jig to then, so you put it in, you line it up, you then glue the pieces together but then you put it back out so you have to make sure you don't glue it in the right place. So here you can see me just putting it in and I'm not actually gluing it. This is just being used as a support. So it's a very interesting system. It's a system I've never personally seen before. But I don't know if I, I enjoyed it. I think I did. I think it was, it was just a little bit alien for me. But I do think it, it, is a, um, it is a good system. It's a system which does work. So look, you put them into the holes. And then I will glue the upper surfaces together. Not surfaces, but upper struts together. And then I will pull it back out and then put it back in but I don't know it's a lot of work and I'm a little bit mixed on a little bit of a mixed opinion on it so if if you have any opinions on it just tell me in the comments below I'd like to have a conversation whether you like the usual way of doing it or would you prefer to do it this way so let me know I also think it's a quick opportunity to uh, tell you a little bit about you might be able to see a couple of stains on a bit of the invasion stripes this was using a very similar to me method to what I had previous, previously sorry, said where a bit of white spirit, oil, streak in the um, direction of airflow and all sorted. So the tyres for this kit I actually really like. I like the quite pronounced um, rubber sort of effect or I don't know, treads. They, they look really nice. So what I first did was give it a flat base of black and then I went in with a rubber black just around the outside to give the effect of worn rubber where there would be contact with either the dirt and stuff. The hubs are then fitted inside the wheel really nicely, really nice fit and then these slide into the place there. So I personally don't think that there was a big enough sort of connection point for those wheels as they, they just they didn't feel like they were properly had any good connection points but you know, may, maybe it was my issue, but <laughs> I had to make sure that they were fully set before I laid any weight on it. You just saw the um, construction of the propeller, very self-explanatory, no real differences or anything new there. It just kind of slaps together and then gets stuck on. So the final step of this little build was to put on the uh, gear bay doors. These go together nicely with some nice connection points and there's pins in it very simple method to get them on however I would recommend having a paint pot nearby just have it rest on to rest on so it doesn't lose the right um, angles and stuff uh, but you know if, if you have a little bit of patience you can just hold it there and it will go together quite nicely so I think it's a good time to also point out the fact that I somehow managed to forget to put on the little um, yellow tips on the propellers I did this on my Anson and I forgot to do it again here. Um, I have, however, resurrected the issue um, in real life, but not in the photos. So I do apologize in advance. 
So the final bit of the build and possibly the most satisfying bit of the build was demasking and taking all the canopy masks off. When you have a canopy like the Mosquito or like some of these World War II bombers which have a load of glass, a load of frames, it is very satisfying to take all of the masks off and see, see your nice work in the cockpit below. Um, I also would like to quickly just recommend CT masks. I don't have any contact with the guy, this is literally just out of my own experience, but they are brilliant masks, they don't leave any residue whatsoever and they fit blooming perfectly. So I hope he continues to make a couple masks. I know they are found on his eBay, I believe, um, and he's got a couple of models up there uh, for ma masks for models, but I hope he continues to make a couple of uh, masks for new ones. So yeah, two thumbs up there and uh, go check them out. Go. So with the final mask now coming off, I'd like to take a moment to just say thank you for watching the video. I am still a little bit blown away by all the support recently, uh, and I, I'm hoping that the content is still enjoyable enough. And without any further ado, here are the final photos of Airfix's brand new photo reconnaissance mosquito. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.